welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course samasa in paninian grammar 2 as is our practice we begin our lecture with the recitation of the mangala charana vishvesham satchidanandam वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संचरी हर्ति लीलया विश्वेशम सच्चिदानंदम वंदेहम योखिल जगत चरीकर्ति बरी भर्ति संचरी हर्ति लीलया as we have said before the focus of this course is the three types of samasas in sanskrit and their treatment in paninian grammar they are avyayi bhav bahuvrihi and dvandva first we study the avyayi bhav samasa as dealt with in the paninian grammar before entering into the avyayi bhava samasa domain we studied the theoretical background of compound formation as stated in the paninian grammar and the paninian grammatical tradition then we also studied the process of compound formation and after that we have started studying the avyayi bhav samasa which is a very important type of samasa in sanskrit the structure of the avyayi bhav samasa can be represented in the form of an equation mentioned on this slide where x and y are two independent separate entities in terms of meaning as well as word form also they are interrelated the speaker of sanskrit then decides to bring them together and merge them together so to say as far as both the meaning as well as the word form is concerned so the process of merging takes place and x and y become the input and a newly generated one output in the form of xy comes into being this is one unit as far as the meaning is concerned and also the word form is concerned and also as far as accent is concerned now in the unit xy x acts as the head as far as the meaning is concerned and also the word form is concerned in the avyayi bhava samasa x generally happens to be an avyaya or an indeclinable and avyayi bhava samasa as a whole as one unit also is termed as avyaya by the sutra avyayi bhavascha 1141 so the form of x 
affects the form of x y thus x acts as the head of x y if any other meaning is to be related to this x y then it should be related through the meaning of x that is the significance of this particular equation and therefore x in x y as one unit is marked in bold characters <clears throat> in the ashtadhyayi avyayi bhav samas is dealt with in different sections let us take a quick look at these various sections and what they contain there is a section of rules in 2.1 starting from 215 up to 2121 which prescribes the avyayi bhav samasa 215 is avyayi bhavah and 2121 is anya padarthe cha saudnyayam these are the sutras which are called samasa vidhayaka sutra the sutras which prescribe a samasa then in 54 from 107 up to 112 we have a small section of sutras which prescribes the end of the samasa suffix in case of the avyayi bhav samasa and then we have some sutras prescribing the accent on the avyayi bhav samasa for example 62121 amongst them first we study the samasa vidhayak sutras so we started with avyayi bhavah and now we are studying 216 which is this big sutra this big sutra has got two padas avyayam as first pada and remaining as second pada avyayam is in the prathama ekavachana and therefore the sutra prathama nirdishtam samasa upasarjanam applies and terms the avyaya as upasarjana and then upasarjanam purvam applies and ensures that the avyaya occupies the initial position of the samasa and the second pada which begins with vibhakti and which ends with anta vachan eshu is one big samasa a dvandva samasa and this is in seventh case 7/3 this is in seventh case 7/3 indicating the meaning conditions it is these meanings which the avyayas denote and then they get compounded with the semantically related subantas and thus the meaning of this sutra we shall read later on but right now let us read the second pada in this sutra it is vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi artha bhava atyaya असंप्रति शब्द प्रादुर्भाव पश्चात एंड यथा दीज वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टडीड अनुपूर्व्य योगपद्य सादृश्य संपत्ति साकल्य एंड अंत अंत वचनेशु नाउ द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस सूत्र कैन बी रेंडर्ड इन संस्कृत 
इन द फॉलोइंग मैनर विभक्तियादिशु अर्थेशु विद्यमानम अव्ययम सुबंतम समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति आई रिपीट विभक्तियादिशु अर्थेशु विद्यमानम अव्ययम सुबंतम समर्थेन सुबंतेन सह समस्यते अव्ययी भावश्च समासो भवति What it means is the following: any indeclinable subanta denoting the sense of vibhakti etc. is compounded with any other semantically related subanta, and the resultant compound is called avyayi bhava. I repeat: any indeclinable subanta avyayam subantam. denoting the sense of vibhakti etc vibhaktyadishu artheshu vidyamanam is compounded samasyate with any other semantically related subanta samarthena subantena sah and the resultant compound samasah is called avyayi bhav avyayi bhavah bhavati this is the meaning of this particular sutra as we said before we have studied how the avyayi bhava samasa takes place in the earlier stated semantic conditions starting with vibhakti samipa samruddhi vriddhi artha bhava atyaya etc in this particular lecture we shall study the four semantic conditions stated on this slide namely anupurvya yogapadya sadrashya and sampatti anupurvya is sequence yogapadya is simultaneity or simultaneousness sadrashya is similarity and sampatti is befitting self esteem now let us study them one by one and see how the avyayi bhava samasa takes place in these semantic conditions so first let us study anupurvya which means sequence the tradition interprets the word anupurvya as anukramaha the sequence so when the meaning is in the sequence of the oldest jeshthasya anupurvyena is the laukika vigraha and then <coughs> we have the alaukika vigraha where we have anu plus ta plus jeshth plus ngas now this alaukika vigraha gets the samasa saudnya and then this samasa gets the pratipadika saudnya by the sutra krutaddhita samasascha after it gets the pratipadika saudnya the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho applies and deletes both the sups namely ta and ngas so we have anu plus 0 plus jeshth plus 0 and then we join them them together and we get the form anu jeshth now when we use the word anu jeshth in the sentence we add the suffix su for example after anujyeshtha and so we have anujyeshtha plus su since the avyayi bhava samasa anujyeshtha ends in a the sutra navyayi bhavat atomtva panchamya applies and substitutes su by am so we have anujyeshtha plus am 
then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the form anujyeshtam which is a subanta form anujyeshtam this is how we use the samasa in the sentence anujyeshtam karyam kritam the work was done in the order of the eldest here the compound qualifies the action denoted by the verbal root kru in the word krit anujyeshtam karyam kritam similarly anujyeshtam pravishantu bhavantah may you all enter in the order of the eldest so here the compound qualifies once again the action action of entering denoted by the verbal root wish together with the preverb pr pravish this is how avyay bhava samasa takes place when anupurvya is the semantic condition let us now move ahead and study the condition yoga padya which is simultaneousness which is ek kalata ek kalata being in the same time zone so now when the meaning to be conveyed is together with the wheel the laukika vigraha is chakrena yugapat chakrena yugapat so the alaukika vigraha would be sah plus su where sah is denoting the sense of yoga padya so sah plus su plus chakra plus ta now this is an alaukika vigraha and here we get the samasa saudnya and because we get the samasa saudnya we apply the sutra krut adhita samasash and we get the pratipadika saudnya then we apply the sutra supodhatu pratipadika yoho which deletes both the sups namely su and ta so we have sah plus 0 plus chakra plus 0 now the sutra that we have studied earlier namely avyayi bhave cha kale applies which substitutes sah by s what that sutra meant is that in the avyayi bhava samasa when the uttara pada does not denote kala or time sah is substituted by s that is what happens here and so we substitute sah by s and we get the finally derived compound output namely sa chakra when we use it in the sentence we add the pratyaya su to it so we have sa chakra plus su and because sa chakra is an avyayi bhava samasa ending in short a so we apply the sutra <coughs> navyai bhavat atomtva panchamyah and substitute su by am so we have sa chakra plus am then we apply the sandhi rules and we get the subanta form sa chakram now we use it in the sentence and say sachakram dehi may you hold the wheel simultaneously so you are holding something and at the same time you hold the wheel that is what is the meaning of this samasa thus is it indicates the semantic condition yoga padya yoga padya is denoted by the 
अव्यय सह विच इज सब्सटीट्यूटेड बाय स इन दिस केस बाय द सूत्र अव्ययी भावे चाकाले After having studied yoga padya let us now move to the next semantic condition which is sadrashya sadrashya is similarity and one who has similarity is similar although these two meaning are very close to each other they are different meanings सादृश्य और सिमिलैरिटी इज अ प्रॉपर्टी वेर एज वन हू हैज सिमिलैरिटी और सिमिलर इज अ द्रव्य सो सिमिलैरिटी और सादृश्य इज द गुण एंड सिमिलर रिफर्स टू अ द्रव्य एंड देर फर द ट्रेडिशन has put forward a question namely that sadrashya was also the, one of the meanings of the word yatha and this sutra has already prescribed the samasa avyayi bhava samasa in the semantic condition of similarity what is the purpose of restating the word sadrashya over here on the force of the fact that this word sadrashya is restated over here the tradition gets the additional meaning namely that this samasa is to be done in the sense of not the similarity but similar so yatharthatvena siddhe in the sense of sadrashya the avyayi bhava samasa was obtainable already and still panini states explicitly the same condition once again sadrashya what is the purpose of stating this condition again द रीजन इज दैट गुणभूते सादृश्य यथा सैत वेन सादृश्य और सिमिलैरिटी बिकम्स गुणभूत एंड वन हू पजेसेस दिस प्रॉपर्टी ऑफ सिमिलैरिटी बिकम्स द प्रधान बिकम्स द हेड इन दैट सेंस ऑल्सो द समास शुड टेक प्लेस that is what is the intention of the sutrakar panini to restate sadrashya so we have sadrashya van sadrushah in the word sadrashya van we have sadrashya plus vat as the suffix sadrashya is the property vat indicates one who possesses now one who possesses similarity is considered to be similar but the word sadrashyavan is referring to a dravya and sadrashya is referring to a property and the point of the tradition is that the word sadrashya over here refers to sadrusha this is the bottom line the word sadrashya over here means sadrusha that means this is referring to a dravya so when we have the semantic condition sadrashya which means sadrusha and when we want to convey similar with a friend somebody is similar like a friend or with a friend so we have sadrusha sakhya this is the laukika vigraha sah once again denotes the meaning of similar and so we have sah plus su plus sakhi plus ta since avyayam is mentioned in prathama avyaya occupies the initial position in the samasa 
So we have saha plus su plus sakhi plus ta. This is the alaukika vigraha. And so at this stage, we get the samasa saudhnya. And so then we get pratipadika saudhnya. And then we apply the sutra 2471, namely supodhatu pratipadika yoho. And we delete both the supratyayas. So we get saha plus zero plus sakhi plus zero. Then we apply the sutra avyayi bhave chakale and substitute saha by sa. What avyayi bhave chakale says is that in the avyayi bhava samasa, if the uttarapada is other than kala, then the avyaya saha is substituted by sa. This is what happens here. Sakhi is the Uttarapada, which is not a Kala, and therefore Saha is substituted by Sa, because this is an Avyayi Bhava Samasa. So when we join them together, we get the finally derived compound output, namely Sa Sakhi. Sadrasha Sakhya is the Laukika Vigraha, and Sa Sakhi is the compound output. This is the Avyayi Bhava Samasa. Then we use the word sasakhi in the sentence. So we add the suffix su after it. So we get sasakhi plus su. Now we know that this is an avyayi bhava samasa. Therefore, we apply the sutra avyayi bhavascha, which declares that an avyayi bhava samasa is an avyaya. And so, we apply the sutra avyayadap supaha which deletes the supratyaya that comes after an avyaya. <coughs> now sasakhi is an avyaya and therefore the supratyaya gets deleted and we get the form Sasakhi as the Subanta form. We can use it in the sentence in the following way. Tasya gunaha sasakhi vartate. His virtue is similar to his friend. Here the word sasakhi is qualifying the guna. Similarly, if we want to say similar like a fox, this is the meaning to be conveyed and we have the laukika vigraha sadrushaha kikhya and then we do the same processing and we get the finally derived compound output sa kikhi sa kikhi this is an important feature of the semantic condition sadrashya let us now study the next semantic condition which is sampatti which means befitting self esteem anurupaha atma bhavaha which is explained in the commentaries as svochitam karma befitting action this is different than samriddhi which means excessive prosperity therefore this is not that sampatti. So, when we have this meaning to be conveyed, namely befitting action of the warriors, we have the laukika vigraha kshatranam sampatti. And then we have the avyaya saha which expresses the meaning sampatti and because in the sutra avyayam is mentioned in prathama avyaya occupies the initial position in the avyayi bhava samasa so we have saha plus su plus kshatra plus am now it, this is alaukika vigraha therefore we get samasa saudhnya therefore we get pratipadika saudhnya 
and then we apply the sutra supo dhatu pratyavadika yoho and we delete both the sups so we have sah plus 0 plus kshatra plus 0 after that we apply the sutra avyayi bhave chakale 6381 which states that sah is to be substituted by s when followed by the uttara pad which is different than kala now here kshatra is the uttara pad which is different than kala and therefore sah is substituted by s so we have s plus 0 plus kshatra plus 0 when we bring them together we get the finally derived compound output namely sakshatra kshatranam sampatti is the input laukika vigraha and sakshatra is the output avyayi bhava samasa when we use it in the sentence we add the suffix su for example so we have sakshatra plus su and because sakshatra ends in short a we apply the sutra navyai bhavat atom tva panchamyaha and we substitute am in place of su so we have sakshatra plus am and then we do the sandhi and we get the form sakshatram this is a subanta form we use this word in the sentence in the following manner sakshatram shalankayananam <coughs> this action of shalankayanas is befitting of warriors this is what is the meaning of this particular sentence this is how sampatti acts as a semantic condition for the generation of the avyayi bhava samas so we have studied four semantic conditions today yoga padya anupurvya sadrishya and sampatti one of the key points over here is that sadrishya means sadrusha over here there is difference between sampatti and samruddhi next we study how the processing of the avyayi bhava samasa happens with the remaining semantic conditions in this particular sutra as well as other sutras and how this process progresses to derive the final output in the form of a nominal root or pratipadika and how that output namely pratipadika plus su behaves in the sentence this is what we shall see next these are the texts referred to thank you very much